So I've absolutely always loved combination breathing or also just these specialty breathing styles. And Tanjiro, a lot, in a lot of my older what ifs, had a ton of them. We used to do kind of like God of Destruction breathing, light breathing, all the breathing styles you could possibly think of. I did something of that assortment. Now, with that said, we are here with a brand new what if, and that is what if Tanjiro had storm breathing. And of course, I know that there are things about breathing styles that aren't necessarily true in canon that I will be talking about in this version but nonetheless I hope you guys still enjoy the video but before I even get into that I want to say a couple things first off I have a discord the discord is dead as heck and please go revive it go in the description below join the discord if you want to come check it out um, you can leave suggestions and stuff like that so it's so much easier down there on top of that check the link in the description for a clothing store that I'm actually partnered with called anime royalty apparel and um, yeah it's a brand new clothing store all inspired by anime from Demon Slayer My Hero Academia to JJK um, it doesn't actually have images from the anime but it has quotes or like different things inspired by that said anime depending on what anime you like um, yeah I just wanted to quickly say that before we get into the what if but now with all that said let's get into this idea of Tondro having storm breathing so for starters obviously things are going to go exactly the same all the way leading up until he meets Urokodaki but once he meets Urokodaki things will change mildly now i only say that because uro kodaki would actually be working um as a trainer like normal or more or less as a swordsman trainer or as a sensei if you want to call it that and he would train tondro as much as possible and tondro would actually pick up on water breathing a lot sooner and when i mean a lot sooner i mean a lot sooner and this would actually be beneficial because Uro Kodaki sees that Tanjiro actually shouldn't still be here. That maybe he should go and more or less be learning from somebody else or would more or less be ready for the final selection. But actually the final selection isn't ready to go. It's actually not the time for him to actually go and take on the final selection. So he can't necessarily even do that. So what does Urokodaki decide to do? He actually decides to do something far different than in canon, and that's actually send Tondro off to meet somebody a little bit earlier, and that would be Zenitsu. Yeah, and you might be wondering, why would he be meeting Zenitsu specifically? But that's actually not the point. He'd be sent there to actually meet the Thunder Breathing Hashira, or the former Thunder Breathing Hashira, the retired Thunder Breathing Hashira, and he would be there to actually learn about Thunder Breathing. Now, Kujima, which I believe that's how you say it, you can roast me in the comment section below if I said that wrong, but Kujima more or less would see Tanjiro as a pretty damn good student, and the reason for that is because he's very receptive, and he would also enjoy being around Zenitsu, who is an absolute freak of psychopath that, you know, we know Zenitsu to be. But we know that Zenitsu will always train, and he tries to sharpen his skills and that very first form as much as possible, the form we know as Thunder, Clap, and Flash. Now, with that saying, or with that being said, excuse me, um, Tanjiro would more or less learn the mass majority of these Thunder Breathing techniques. Now, he would learn these massive principles, but then soon he would realize he wouldn't actually be able to utilize Thunder Breathing, and then soon he would realize he can't even utilize Water Breathing now. Now, this would be an odd spectacle, so obviously the Thunder Breathing Has Hashira would, or the former Thunder Bre Breathing Hashira, Kujima, would more or less ask him why he's trying to learn multiple or more or less ask him what's holding him back and he's not even sure he has no idea what's truly holding him back but soon he would learn that it's because something else has awakened within him and with very little time about three months until the first final selection that he can actually participate in he now understands that his pathway to breathing style or his pathway to learning a breathing style is different than anybody else's. 
and he begins to actually combine the more or less inherent rituals or the inherent techniques of both thunder breathing and water breathing inherently making what we will know as storm breathing and he would first start with the very first breathing style he could even come up with he would combine obviously the forms of water breathing and and thunder breathing but they would not be simultaneous in their conversions now to start with he would inhale deeply imagining this gathering of a storm and then in or then exhale forcefully as hard as possible releasing breath like it's a crashing wave accelerating himself forward and as he does an entrail of lightning and thunder begins to roar forward as he begins to eclipse distance faster than anybody has as before as if the crashing wave was electrified with more or less lightning and as he does this the calm of this water would combine with the explosiveness of thunder and with one slash a huge tidal wave of electrical more or less water could be seen slashing through the air but it's a small version it's not like it's a huge tidal wave that would more or less hurt a bunch of people around now tondro in his brain is thinking that that was just a fast strike an extremely fast and precise strike that he has now come up with that he'll now deem as rumbling tide or at least at least storm breathing first form rumbling tide now with that said there is a couple things that are interesting about this because Zenitsu realizes that he just saw everything that Tondro was describing or doing. He was seeing the water, seeing the thunder, seeing the lightning coursing through the water, creating the strike that was so lethal, and he's surprised by it. I mean, obviously, none of these have ever created actual elemental effects, and even the former thunder hashira would be at complete odds with this idea now with all that said there is somebody currently watching and this person that is currently watching well his name is kaigaku and kaigaku is even more jealous as they speak because well kaigaku just got more or less shown up by a random person that just came into the fray a random person that they just met and this would shred his ego like crazy kaigaku would feel like absolute garbage he would think that there's just no way that someone else is now the favorite of well the teacher that he sought after so long that this is horrible that this is disgusting but we wouldn't be revealed to much of Kaigaku until far later, but the seeds have been planted even earlier in this regard. Now, as they continue on and as they head off to the final selection, Tanjiro would breeze through the final selection, and that becomes a kind of a consistent thing most of the time, and the reason why he would breeze through though is the fact that he's utilizing a breathing style that actually has elemental effects. His rumbling tide allows him to dash forward at insane speeds, faster than most people can possibly see, and arguably as fast as a lightning bolt. Then he has another form by the name of Thunderstorm Surge, where he basically can do something similar in terms of a rapid storm surge strike or, or thunderstorm surge strike but this time around it's actually multiple strikes these strikes would be just surged with thunderous energy and it would be absolutely catastrophic for the area around so he tries his best not to you know destroy everything but the demons would be terrified by this I mean, they would think that maybe this guy is some sort of part demon. Maybe this guy is actually part demon and somehow has a blood demon arts. But they would learn quickly that he is just a human, just a demon slayer that has now evolved even further beyond. And yes, that does sound like some Dragon Ball Z stuff, but of course, we're talking about elemental breathing styles now, like true elemental breathing styles now. So I guess you could make the, you know suggestion that it is kind of uh you know dragon ball z like at this point because we're talking about some outlandish powers now 
You may be wondering, I mean, how does this really affect everything that comes and goes? And storm breathing would be absolutely the strongest breathing style out there. Now, you might be like, well, that doesn't make sense. I mean, we know that sun breathing is the most lethal. I mean, it was literally the breathing style that was that every other breathing style was made from. And I agree. But in this canon of Demon Slayer, he combines the art of water and thunder, creating something that was even more lethal because it actually appears in real life. In sun breathing, there is no actual flames. You're not actually, you know, having the sun come down and fight with you. But in this regard, he could actually utilize the water and the lightning to either more or less surge through the area to kill demons quickly, stun demons with the electrical current, or stuff like more or less just making a giant cloud of thunder and lightning to actually fight with him. And this might sound insane, but that is the truth in this regard of Tondro. So in the early stages of Tondro, this would be absolutely easy very very easy especially if he learns how to actually control lightning at will i mean this puts him on a totally different stage we know that the demons are extremely fast but lightning is super super fast we're talking on the levels of well mach 500 to mach 5000 and this would make it so he's basically able to strike down demons from a distance or surge through with a lightning kind of a lightning plus water or storm like blade and slice through the necks of any demon he comes across with such absolute force that raw strength isn't needed to slice through their necks. Now, you might be wondering, okay, so how does this fare against the Swamp Demon? He easily will defeat the Swamp Demon with his intense and insane speed, and the only time that he'll even basically hesitate is when he finally encounters Muzon. Because, well, when he does encounter him though, Muzon would see the power that this kid holds, because out of nowhere, there would be a very, very odd predicament because the area around him would begin surging with electricity and the clouds begin to funnel in as if they're crackling ready to spark. Muzan realizes that this is his time to head out because he doesn't want to turn into or want this to turn into some sort of, you know, brawl or brawl. So he more or less just avoids it. And that's just kind of a Muzan thing to do. But Muzan would leave and would leave with a would leave a parting gift, so so Tondro would still have to face down two demons that are of relatively strong strength. But here's the thing: these demons took on a Tondro originally and still lost, of course, with the help of of Yushiro, Lady Tamayao, and and Nezuko. But he, they're taking on a Tondro that has now all the abilities to not only slow down demons but also paralyze them entirely with electricity and thunder breathing, or at least a partial, a partial part of thunder breathing. And his speed is so insane that he'd be able to more or less just blitz through every single person or the two demons that are there. On top of that, he continues to evolve his thunder or his more or less storm breathing type of style, which allows him to interact with other elements too. Because you have something like lightning, and you have something like water, but with the with the storm and the clouds and so on, you also have mist, which would allow him to more or less just shoot up a cloud of mist that would basically cover the area, and Tondra would be really the only person that can see through this veil and allow him to easily get the jump on a massive amounts of demons or obscure their vision to the point where others can set up set up hits that are insane. On top of that, we ha he has the ability to actually make small whirlwinds, a whirlwind that makes a circu circular motion where he sprints around slicing through the air, basically sending these slashes through the th through said air, but also basically funneling everybody into the eye of the storm 
and this would be another form of setting up his quote-unquote teammates but more like setting up his quote-unquote demon slayers now with all that said his journey with with zenitsu would be actually different because he would know zenitsu this entire time and arguably would probably be around him actually more so they might go off on their uh, go off together earlier on but for continuity's sake let's say he still meets up with zenitsu at least heading toward the mansion but zenitsu would listen a little bit better and he would slap him in the head telling him hey like focus up and let's go that is time to get to work because this is our damn job and we need to understand that and you know he would give the lecture of leaving the girl alone and zenitsu would be crying and stuff like that now the interaction with Anosuke would be very 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 similar maybe Anosuke would even be more kind of motivated to actually take on Tanjiro because of these insane abilities because he would think to himself oh well I mean I'm a boar or at least I have beast breathing so I should be able to you know summon beasts or something like that but of course he can't necessarily do that but still Tanjiro would find it a little bit amusing and you might be wondering why am I not talking about Kyogai why am I not talking about these other demons well these other demons would get washed I mean Kyogai would be the closest thing to actually give them a challenge but like I said the speed that Tanjiro would be put at and well we'll talk about how thunder breathing has affected Tanjiro overall but I will talk about that a little bit later in the video and Kyogai's fight would be a relatively simple one because he's able to dash so quickly using even his first form rumbling tide now as we continue on throughout the story and like i said before this was gonna be a little bit different unless i didn't reference that if i didn't reference that i'm referencing it now this will be a little bit of a different story i might not even eclipse every single aspect of it because this is more of like a fantasy world type of story in this regard now their journey up into mount natagomo would be something that is pretty basic and only reason why I say that is because a lot of these demons won't be as strong as a Tanjiro and Zenitsu. Now, I clump them together because Zenitsu would get even better training with Tanjiro around. With Tanjiro there, he would be way, way, way more serious about the training he needs to get through and way more in tuned with what they need to actually do, which would be perfect because i mean zenitsu needs that discipline and with that extra help from somebody his age and somebody that is trying to eclipse and get better and protect his sister there would be no um, disagreements with zenitsu now rui would be the quote-unquote challenge in this regard and you might be wondering why i say quote-unquote and that's because of a speed gap and a speed gap that is absolutely massive now, we've seen Zenitsu speed blitz a ton of people, but this is a Zenitsu that is on a totally different level. I mean, it, it's kind of obvious, right? I mean, it's a Zenitsu that can move as fast as him, but on top of that has even more elemental effects that can actually help him, which is a absolute monumentous thing, especially in the world of Demon Slayer. And soon, this, and then after this next part, this is where I'll be stopping, quote unquote, the story, because I want to just break down what I, what I'm thinking in my head here. Because, okay, let's lead up until the rehabilitation, rehabilitation, excuse me, training. Now, the rehabilitation training was something that was less about the rehabilitation and more about the connection with Nezuko. And Nezuko was a bit a big factor and still is a hands down a big factor. But once they learn that Tanjiro is able to basically use this weird kind of elemental version of two different breathing styles and it actually is like powers, like straight up mythical powers, they would be 100%, 1 million percent wanting Tanjiro to teach them how he discovered these things. And this may even lead to a more insane version of the Demon Slayers, in turn wiping out absolutely everything. Yeah, absolutely everything, right? An introduction into this new idea of combining forms, which I know is a little unprecedented because um, of basically 
um it wouldn't do much it wouldn't do a ton is what i mean by it that's why it's unprecedented even though we have seen tondro do something similar in uh the demon in demon slayer itself and i believe that was in the most recent season ironically enough now with that said would they be able to actually create this spontaneous combustion of these crazy breathing styles would they be able to combine you know fire and water you know or would they be able to combine these other breathing styles to make something even crazier right which i would love to hear in your guys or in the comment section below what you guys think would occur if they did combine certain ones get fantasy with it i know technically they combine it oh well nothing will happen of course but be a little uh, fantasy get a little fantasy with it and think about what kind of combinations would you want to see um in the near future but storm breathing was the first thing that i 100 percent landed on and storm breathing is something that well combines the speed um, of basically thunder breathing the speed that Ta or that zenitsu has with tanjiro's abilities and with that let me segue into my other points now i'm gonna be stopping going through the storyline here yes i know there are quite a few arcs left the mugen train the entertainment district the swordsmith's village arc but here's this thing right let's say we get rid of the idea of storm breathing that it's not some mythical power or some crazy thing and some crazy amount of uh more or less power and elemental powers that are actually being displayed if we say that tondro just actually trains thunder breathing and also trains water breathing this would put him at a pretty pretty high scale and you may be you some of you may questioning why well in literally the swordsmith's village arc we see him use something or mimic the thunder breathing technique from zenitsu now if he has more experience with it more details with it and more training with it him being able to utilize the speed of zenitsu which we have seen zenitsu literally dodge lightning bolts by the way which would make him insanely fast which obviously would make tondro insanely fast if you put that on tondro with the other breathing styles with his eventual breathing style of sun breathing and his and him being able to consistently actually use that type of speed well he would earlier on be so much stronger so much stronger and you could argue that later on he would be stronger as well because in my opinion if you have more experience with other breathing styles i think that opens up the web of basically techniques even more than you could possibly imagine but that's a totally different argument in itself and the reason why i don't even want to go into the mugen train the entertainment district because this version of tanjiro the more fantasy version of tanjiro would wipe out all the top tier demons he would wipe out with them with his speed the ability to stun them the ability to change terrain and make it to where it's basically in his favor and he would be able to easily dominate by actually helping other demon slayers get the wins as well with certain techniques that would allow him to stun more or less um more or less stop vision of the demons maybe a whirlwind thunder breathing um, style that would basically make a circular motion like i said and would combine and more or less force all of these demons to be stuck in the center and that would help massively as well and all of these ways tondro could truly help because of these elemental type of outbreaks or these elemental type of powers so that's why i won't go too in depth with these other arcs but i would love to hear what you guys have to say about tondro actually having storm breathing and if you want other videos like this let me know in the comment section below um like where i'm kind of more or less talking about cool things that could occur and stuff like that it's more of like a ranty type of video i know and i'm more talking to you guys as if as if we're like on a discord call talking about certain things like this but i kind of like my videos like that a little bit every so often it adds a nice breath of fresh air but um with all that said and done and with the story over quote unquote um if y'all enjoyed 
show some love leave a like leave a sub leave a comment down below all that good stuff this was what if tondro had storm breathing and as always i hope y'all enjoyed the video and i hope y'all have an amazing day later